Hey guys, Automatic Garage back today. And what are we installing, Lee? I forgot what it's called. Oh, thanks. This is not good. Take two. What are we installing today, Lee? Crankcase vent delete by smelling diesel. Smetting, not smelling, smelling diesel. I mean, you Whatever. can smell diesel if you want. Okay. I kind of like the smell of diesel. We're installing on the 6.7 here. This is a 2012. And uh, this has been in one of our other videos, I think. It was What's That Sound? It was a AC clutch on here. So he's got a little bit of an oil leak. Um, this has never had the crankcase filter. This sits up here on top of the, the valve cover um, replaced. So it can create excessive crankcase uh, pressure and cause things to leak that wouldn't normally leak. And so we're going to try to rule this out first. I was just going to replace the filter with the original factory filter, but uh, it's on a national shortage. Uh, I can't find any Ford dealership. Can't find it on Amazon, uh, eBay, none of the online Ford sites, none of that stuff. Uh, my local Ford dealer here said they would have it maybe in August. So that's no good. So we just opted to pay an extra 20 bucks to go through smetting diesel and get this delete kit here to uh, delete the crankcase event. Let me show you what we got. Put the hose down with the parts. So here's what we got. Smetting diesel, crankcase vent delete, got all this nice looking stuff here. Nice hose, push lock. So we're gonna let Lee get busy. We're pulling off what we gotta pull off the valve cover. So this is what's coming out where the crankcase vent stuff is going underneath here. So these lines are in the way. All right, so you want to undo your two hoses to your upper fuel filter here. I hate this one. It's always a pain to me. You have to push and squeeze at the same time. And it's kind of, oh, it's aggravating. It's not as easy as this, this green one here. So we're going to take this out of here. Because it's in our way. There you go, Lee. So now we popped this hose here off. I tucked it right here for now. It's going to come off also right there later, but right now we're concerned with getting the box off. You got, see, it's going to be hard to see that stud right there that's in between the box and that line. It's got an electrical connector slid over. You got to pull that off and then pull that stud out. I think you can barely see the head of it. It's right back there at the back. It's just one there. And then you got, there's another one at the front right there. There's four all together and the last one. All right, we got all our bolts loose. The other one I didn't show y'all is in the back. There's no way for me to show you, but I'm gonna show you where it's at on this box when I get it out. So now we just gotta fish it out. And this is why you had to undo the fuel filter up here. So you could manipulate these lines around. I don't know that I can get this out with just one hand. There we go. So four bolts all together. This is the one that had the stud on it. This was just a bolt. This is the one in the back that I couldn't remotely show you. I was trying to show you all this one earlier. It was hard to see also. This one's pretty fun to get out. Can't fit an electric ratchet back there. Barely get a turn on it. And then the other one's up here. Four all together. And this, I mean, oil just came all out of this when we took it off. And I'm pretty sure this one has never been done. Hey, Lee, what are you doing? Tighten this up. I'm not Gary. So we got our two adapters on. That one right back there. And this one that Lee is working on. The rubber plug right there. We got installed. That was real fun to get to the hose clamp for that. So I undid the charge air cooler pipe here. Just swung it out of the way without undoing the back bracket. Tighten the hose clamp up. He's tightening both of those up right now. There's only one. No, there's one there. There's two on that other one back there. And then we're going to put our elbow on. We're going to put our push lock fitting on. We're going to run our hose. And then this will all be done. I got to put one bolt back in the fuel line that ran right there that I had to push over out of the way a little bit, the eight millimeter. And this will be ready. And hopefully this will resolve his oil leak. If it does not, we're going to be probably resealing the oil pan or it's that crank seal which i highly doubt that's what it is but we'll see if this helps the problem now we're going to put this in 
Oh, cool. Okay. Oh, cool. I got to deal with interference from these hoses now. Now that nut will allow it to swivel. We're gonna decide where we want it to point. And I think we're gonna do and that don't give me a whole lot of room. This too slot. I ain't gonna work right there. We got it all installed here. All tightened up back there, ran it over the brake booster, down the inner fender well, and now we may have to trim a little bit. I had to take this bolt out right there in that fuel line to move the fuel line earlier to get the crankcase vent filter out. So now we're gonna hit all this with a little bit of brake clean, get any oil and grease off of here, so make sure we don't have any leaks in the future and put our fuel filter back in and give it a try. All right, we're all installed. Lee's priming the fuel filter back up. I like removing pointless stuff from engine bays. Looks a little bit cleaner back here now. We spray the valve cover all off with some brake clean. Get any oil and stuff off. We're gonna crank it up here in a minute. I'm gonna clean the bottom of the truck off so we can check for any other oil leaks. And we're gonna go from there. All right guys, hope you enjoyed the video on doing the crankcase delete on the 6.7. Uh, hopefully it's gonna fix his oil problem. We'll be following up with y'all. If it doesn't, he'll be bringing it back. I'm sure we'll have to do some more investigative work to see if we got that upper oil pan gasket leaking or if we got the front timing cover uh, leaking or crank seal, something like that. But we cleaned the bottom end, drove the truck some, and uh, I can't see any oil leaks. So it was overfilled with oil also, however. I think he may have been overfilling this thing. So. We drained the oil level down a little bit, got it right on the hash marks, got the crankcase vent delete, so hopefully we're not overpressurizing the crankcase anymore. And uh, we'll go from there. This is Automatic Garage signing out. Y'all like, subscribe, comment, check us out at Facebook, check us out at automaticgarage.com. Instagram and Rumble also. We've got more videos coming. We'll hot y'all later.